Hi, everybody. Welcome back from lunch. I hope you had a good lunch. My name is John Travis. Uh, I have been with the company actually nine years. So I was based in California for eight years. I used to be responsible for the Adobe brand overall globally, all creative, all media, all campaign marketing, and our website. And I recently uh, have moved to London to run European marketing. I'm thrilled to be here. And I thought what I would do, because we're all talking about digital transformation, I thought what I would do is talk about Adobe's own transformation. So about five years ago, we decided at Adobe to really make a hard right-hand turn to digital. And today, Adobe, we spend over 70% of our marketing budget globally. It's a fair amount of money in digital. And so we basically had to change almost everything to sort of capitalize on the move to digital and take advantage of all of the great technology and products that we use. We're big users, obviously, of all Adobe products from Creative Cloud and Marketing Cloud. So I thought I would just share with you our own transition, maybe some of the mistakes we made, some of the things we learned along the way. And we're not done, and we're not perfect, and we're still working on it, just like everybody in the room. But I thought I would share that. And, and even before I begin, Mark Zablon kicked off the uh, day today talking about change. We've all been talking about change. Um, and the enormous amount of change taking place in terms of how marketers are feeling. And we talk to marketers all day long, all around the world. We also talk to creative professionals, people in the creative industry, and consumers. Just so you know, you're not alone in terms of if you're feeling the sense of change taking place. Um, but what's interesting about the change, there's a lot of cool statistics behind me, but I think the point I want to make is, as much change as there is taking place, and I feel like marketers in particular are feeling the pressure of having to change, there's a lot of upside in terms of the impact of marketing, marketers' ability to prove their value and worth. It's actually, in our viewpoint, the most fantastic time to be in this business, in the marketing business. Creative professionals are feeling the same way. Over two-thirds of creative professionals feel that they are much more strategically important to their companies. There's a sense of optimism despite all of this change taking place. And we feel that, hopefully you feel that too. And we've been talking a lot about customer experience. Really, for me, the focus of digital is how do I really drive the best, most personalized customer experience that I can. Some data here from our consumer studies we've done, we see that consumers, if, if the experiences, if the content isn't compelling, is, if it isn't something that's relevant, they switch it off. And so there's a lot of pressure on marketers and creative professionals to deliver that digital experience. So let me start with, hopefully this will work, let me start with, Ta-da! Let me start with the change. And when I talk about Adobe and what we had to change, basically, over the last five years, we've changed pretty much everything, if I'm, if I'm honest with you. And I thought I would share with you a few things. I'm not going to really talk about the technology. You're going to talk about technology all day, all day today. I really want to talk about culture and process and people. Because those are the things that when we embarked on this journey of digital, we didn't really anticipate so much. We didn't really think about the other changes we would have to make in order to use these products. And the mindset that we had to change, if I was going to sum it all up, is we had to move from kind of a campaign thinking of old. It's like you spend five months making your campaign, everything's perfect, your copy's lovely, your web page is great, you have this great ad, five, five months of perfection, then you launch your campaign. Then you wait like three months and you hope it works. And then you would do some kind of tracking survey. And that's kind of how Adobe did their marketing for years. That's the way that we were organized. That's the way that we thought about marketing. And we had to totally throw that out the window and we had to move to this world of always on marketing. We're in a 24 seven conversation with our customers and we had to adapt to that conversation. And frankly, that relationship, a much deeper relationship today with our customers than we had before. And just a few things that we did that were helpful to us. The first problem we had, you know, we have, we were big users of Adobe Analytics. We had all this amazing data, but everybody had a little different piece of the data. So I would go to a meeting, like a two hour meeting, and we'd spend an hour and 25 minutes debating the data. <laughs> because everybody had a little different piece of it. And then maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes, we'd talk about what we were going to do. Big problem. Very big problem for us. What we decided to do is we created this concept of a single source of truth, where basically we consolidated all data analytics, all dashboard creation to one group at Adobe. Only one group, we call them the Marketing Insights and Optimization Group, they, have act, they are the collectors and the purveyors of the data. Sounds very basic, but that was culturally very hard. Because you can imagine, people like their data. They don't want to give up their data. But for us, that means that I go to my two-hour meeting now, 
Maybe I spend 10 minutes arguing about what the data says, but we spend much more time focusing on what we're actually going to do. What are the insights from the data? A huge change for us. Sounds so basic, but it was huge. The second area was really around getting our mindset around testing and optimization. I used to do, maybe if I was lucky, three tests a month on my website. That was it, if I was lucky. Now we're doing 15 to 20, 25 tests a week globally. And that requires products and process, but it also requires a mindset because I come from a world of marketing of perfection, where I want every single thing to be absolutely perfect before I put it out in the marketplace. And while I still want it to be perfect, of course I do, now I have to be much more willing to, I test stuff, different messages, a new video, throw out a new image. That's a mindset we had to change, much more profound than we ever thought because it's a completely different cultural way that we think about marketing. And the last big area that we're focused on now, we've been talking about it today, is content, content velocity. In other words, now that I'm finally able to personalize experiences across these devices, the content needs have exploded. And we're grappling with that right now. We're putting basic things in place, like a content audit. We had never done an audit of who in the company is producing content, what content actually is working. We, we did, we're doing a much more thorough investigation of our content, and you'd be surprised how many people in your company are producing content. <laughs> so basic uh, content roadmaps. We now think about campaigns in terms of this customer journey, and I'm actually mapping out what are the content needs for each stage of this journey, a much more disciplined process around content development, trying to get my arms around all the content needs that I have. The last thing I'll say is we had to really change the type of people we brought into the organization. I'm actually insourcing quite a bit of stuff that I used to give to agencies. So as an example, I've insourced all my email production, my search marketing, my media optimization, content production, I have copywriters, et cetera. And that might not be the answer for every company, but for us, it was the only way that we can react 24 seven. I can't call up an, a vendor and say, could you please change this email? I don't have time. And that doesn't mean that my agency relationships aren't important. They're even more important because now I'm spending a lot of my time worrying about the day to day. I rely on my agency to help me think long term. What are the big ideas? Where are we going? A very different relationship, much less transactional and much more strategic with our agency. Just a completely different dynamic. Um, the thing I will say, though, is, and this is what I think we learned above all, in some ways, nothing's changed at all. <laughs> And what I mean by that is, you know, I've been going around literally the world talking to a lot of marketers, and um, I've been in this profession a very long time, and I get the sense that marketers feel like, oh, God, everything I learned for the last 10 or 20 years, I have to just throw out the window. I have to start all over again. And what we discovered was that's not true at all. And in fact, everything that we know as marketers, the inherent beliefs and instincts we have about marketing are more true now than they ever were before, and it gave us confidence that we could actually make this change. And hopefully, I'll share a bit of that with you. It might give you confidence that you know what you're doing. You actually do know what you're doing. Sure, a lot of change, a lot of, of transition going on, but inherently as marketers, we know what we're doing. So let me share some thoughts around that. The first is around brand. So brand fundamentals still matter. And this is something that we didn't think about <laughs> on this transition. And what I mean by that is, what is your value prop? Why are you differentiated from other companies? What do you stand for? Where are you going? These things are more important than ever before. And not just because brand is obviously critical to business. Obviously, brand is a strategic element of business strategy. That's a given. But in the world of digital, where you're in a 24-7 connection with your customer, if you don't know who you are, how could you possibly have a relationship with these people? Being genuine, being transparent, those are so critical today. We actually had to go back and have conversations. Who are we? Like, what are our values? Because now I'm actually in a relationship with my customer, a much deeper relationship. What has changed, though, is what I would say the kind of brand training of old. As I said, I've been doing this a very long time. And back in my day, branding was about control. It was about trademarks and protection. And I'm going to sue you if you use my logo. It was a very controlled world. That's what's changed. I'm going to throw that out the window completely. Um, and what we think about is, because Adobe, for those of you who don't know, is a 30-year-old company. 
how do I keep the Adobe brand modern? How do I keep it fresh? How do I keep it alive? This is something that in the age of digital, we had to rethink the, the element of control. So what we think about now is, how do we open up the brand? How do we, create, how do we get our customers to actually participate in the branding itself? And I'd like to show you a short video, please. Adobe basically came with this um, open brief of do anything you want with the shape of our logo. They just said take our logo and put your own interpretation on it. And if anything, their guidance and boundaries were to just be yourself. Any logo is iconic and set in stone and, and not to be trifled with. And to have Adobe initiate this project where they let all sorts of designers and artists take apart their logo, it was nerve-wracking. I have no idea how I'm going to create anything even remotely in the shape of the Adobe logo. I am not satisfied if it looks like shit. What I love about this project is like everyone tried to do something very, very experimental. In my case, I was working with a material that I never worked before, so for me it was a big leap into the unknown. Jessica, what's the most challenging part of being blindfolded here? Not being able to see. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciated Adobe's willingness to give up their brand to be reinterpreted. It just shows that they believe in their artists. You know, they, they trust and believe in their community to be able to do that. It's a very beautiful thing. So this pro project is, is not about a logo stunt. It's about actually asking our customers to participate in the creation of our identity and our voice to the world. And if you go to an Adobe office, an event, if you see an advertisement on our website, you're going to see a lot of this artwork. It's, it's, we're basically embedding our customer into the very brand itself. And you can imagine, it's super cool and beautiful artwork, but the affinity and the connection that it creates, particularly with our creative customers, is huge. We had to let go, we got to open up the brand. Very, very big difference. Market research is another thing I want to talk about briefly. Market research, it's always been a part of marketing. I love market research, I always have. Maybe back in the day, market research was about focus groups and it was about a diary study. The, the way I think about market research is different, but the core value of it and how I think about it remains true today and even more so. And again, moving to this world of data-driven marketing where we sort of think about data throughout the entire marketing journey that we're created. So one of the benefits that we have with all this data, and we have a lot of historical data now, and the results around them is we're really able to model and predict predict how our marketing is going to do before we even launch a campaign. So at Adobe, before we even launch a campaign, we use econometric modeling based on a revenue goal, or maybe it's a unit goal in adobe.com. I can play with, now that I have all this historical knowledge, I can play with what's the spend level I need? What's the mix that I need? And we have this in the US, we have this in the UK, we are extending it to Germany, we are extending it to Japan, we will have it in more countries after that. And what's interesting is the more data that we get, the more frighteningly accurate this becomes. I can go to my CEO and I know, and again, it's not perfect, it's not 100% perfect, but it's a great tool to go into my CEO and say, okay, for this revenue goal, this is what I need, and this is the mix that I'm going to employ. Very, very helpful, impossible, impossible years ago without the data. The second area is once we are in the midst of our campaign, as I talked about, we're in this ongoing optimization. And the one thing I will say is, we basically have a group of people at Adobe. Every Monday morning, they get together, they review the data, and when I say a group of people, it's not just marketing. It's marketing, IT, e-commerce, product marketing, product management, all in the same room. We had to kind of throw the org chart out. I don't care about the org chart. I could care less. It's a group of people that are all signed up. They basically review the data that that group I talked to you about provides the dashboards, and at the end of the day, they publish results for the week, and they publish insights, and then the leadership team on Tuesday decides, should we make changes, should we not? And we do that every week, week in, week out, week in, week out. Totally different than the three months running my campaign and then doing a brand tracker. You can imagine culturally how different it is to say, I don't care about the org chart. That's a very big cultural change for us. 
And then last but not least, at the end of the campaign, we synthesize all the results, we do a full analysis and report out to our CEO and to his leadership team. We sometimes ask for more money if it's going well, and, um, and then we do it again. So it's, a, it's kind of a, an ongoing cycle. Another area is media. Uh, and I'll just say a few words about media. Obviously, media has always been important <laughs> to marketing, and maybe it was smaller. Maybe we thought about media as my print and my radio and my TV and maybe my banner ad. Still, thinking about media in general, just open your mind to what is media. And that's what we've had to do. So we think about media in terms of not the classic definition, but maybe the full array of potential touch points that I can engage with my consumer. Obviously, Adobe.com, strategically for us, is the number one most fundamental marketing vehicle. But we think about media now really expansively, opening our minds to what is marketing and what is media. And I would say what's interesting is kind of the blurring between traditional marketing, like a website or an advertisement, and product experience. So for example, Adobe, we've launched hundreds of mobile applications the last few years, particularly on the creative side of our business. So a product like Photoshop Mix basically allows you to edit and do cool things with photos with your iPhone, with your iPad. That is media to us. That is the, I don't need to put an ad in my app. My app is the experience my customer is having. So I'm thinking about the app just as much as I'm thinking about the video or the print ad or the event or my social post. I have to think about all of it, and I have to be connected with my friends in product marketing who are responsible for that app. Very, very different. But to me, it's still media. It's still the way that I engage with my customer. Okay. Uh, quickly, as I'm running out of time, uh, another thing I would say uh, in terms of what's still true today, and this goes back to, I don't know, this statement, maybe it's the 1930s, that the customer is king. And it's still true today, but how we think about customers at Adobe is we really think about customers as part of a broader community. We're no longer in this one-to-one -one transactional relationship, I'll sell you a box of software, see you later. We're in a conversation with a community of our customers, and we're trying, to, uh, we're trying to create a feeling and a connection of community, not just between Adobe and ourselves, our Adobe and our customers, but with the customer ecosystem completely. So I want to share with you a video. Um, this is, and I, let me just do a little bit of setup. In June, we, we launched Creative Cloud, the 2015 release of Creative Cloud. And one of the really cool things about the release in June was that, back to mobile applications, we released a whole slew of mobile applications. And the cool thing about that was we have this thing called Creative Cloud Libraries. It's basically where if you're using one of our mobile applications, like Photoshop Mix or Photoshop Edit, whatever you do in mobile gets automatically saved in your Creative Cloud Library. So when you go to the desktop version of the product, you have all your assets and everything. You can basically now create wherever, however, whatever you want. Super, super cool. So we said to ourselves, how do we take that idea, and how do we bring in the community, and how do we make it a complete experience? So let me show you a quick video. When I first got to the brewery, I was excited. It's full of light, of texture, of ideas, inspiration. I like the bit of adrenaline rush. I only get nervous if there are like, if the police is coming or something, then I get nervous. <laughs> These new creative cloud tools give artists like me a chance to show the world through our eyes. Everything I find shows up in my library. It's full of possibilities. It's not clean, it's not sterile, it's, it's alive.
So the idea behind that campaign, just explain it to you, was that's David Masha, a very well-known artist out of Berlin. We had artists and creatives, Japan and the US, all over the world. We gave them these mobile apps. We said, go make cool things. That, and that's great. That's a nice marketing campaign to kind of show off the new features of the product. But then we had to think about how do we take that customer experience all the way through. So every asset that was made as part of that campaign, you know, the artists had little imagery and, and, and copy. Every single asset that was made was put in the product. So if you were a Creative Cloud customer already, or let's say you're doing a free trial, you could actually download the, uh, the assets that you saw in the marketing and make something with it and then post it. And it became a completely viral community activity and ex tons of excitement around the product, around mobile, because the product experience was the marketing. And again, we're not perfect. This is kind of the first time we ever did something like that. But it was so powerful to have that complete experience and not thinking about my marketing. You know, I'll do my marketing, and then we'll leave the product over here. We really tried to think of the whole thing. So super, super cool, and, and you should have seen the stuff that was made was just, we're always blown away by what our customers make with our tools. It was just fantastic. The last thing I would say, and I don't know where the slide is, so I'm just going to say it. Maybe it's this one. Anyway, the last point, the last thing I will leave you with is that creativity still matters. Creativity is the foundation of all marketing. Instinct, emotion, human connection. And that will never change. This is our belief. Marketing will never, ever be done by robots, ever. <laughs> and therefore, we believe that, you know, to me, I'll just leave you with my personal feeling, that, that mar as marketers, it's that right side of the brain, that instinct and emotion, the cool experience, that creative je ne sais quoi, that thing. When you combine that with the left side, with the analytics and the data, and you put those two things together, that's what makes our profession so interesting and cool to be in. We're the only people that put those things together. And I would say, don't forget that. With all the tools and all the technology, it's still about creativity and a human relationship. That's what we learn through this journey. That's what we believe. And as marketers, I think that's what we're all about. So I think I've talked enough. I hope there was something meaningful in that for you. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.